Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sarvaha. This video is dedicated to my final year students who are really keen to know how to write synopsis and dissertation. Dissertation is an integral part of any degree. Before starting any research, it is necessary to choose the title or a topic. That topic or title should reflect the importance of your research and should also answer some of the major questions like which type of problem your dissertation is going to challenge or raise. Secondly, why it is a problem for the research, academics or any other community. Thirdly, why it is important for you to find a solution of that problem. And fourthly, how you are going to research for the answer. Before writing dissertation, it is necessary to write synopsis. Synopsis gives a clear picture about your idea and perceptions and objective about a particular research which you are going to do in the future. There is a prescribed structure of the dissertation synopsis. The first one is to selection of dissertation topic. The topic is the most important thing for the research which should be selected wisely. For example, it should be specific, unambiguous and explicit. That means it should not be vague or prolonged and it should be about the general, legal, informative or technical issues at national or international level. The second thing is it introduction. It should provide a brief description about the area of the proposed research work in a very concrete, concise and accurate manner. It must be clear rather than fuzzy and general. The third thing which is considered as one of the most important thing and that is a base of a research is a review of literature. To understand review of literature, it is more necessary to understand the meaning of research. The meaning of research is to search again. That means the search has been already done on a specific topic and you are going to review that particular literature and then search again to find something new and essential and very important part of that particular research. And that thing which has not been done previously in the same area of proposed research. It is essential to plan further research efficiently and in an appropriate manner. The information given in the review should be supported by references. The next step is objectives of research. There must be comprehensive objectives of the research work. The objective can be one and maximum to three, not more than that. These objectives will indicate the major aspects and the overall purpose of the study. It should be clearly and concisely defined. These are broad statement of desired outcome or the general intention of the research, which paint a picture of your research work. The maximum aim or objectives should be up to three. It should not be too extensive. Make accurate use of concept which must be sensible and precisely described. The next step is justification of the problem. Every object needs justification. In research, it is essential to justify your objective in a concrete, impressive and remarkable manner. You may take help from the previous research work cases, reports, etc. There is a possibility to predict the specific and general benefits likely to be achieved as a result of complexion of the proposed research by making comparison and citing references of the previous work. The next step is hypothesis of study. It is a specific statement of prediction. It describes in concrete terms what you expect will happen in your studies. Hypothesis is a statement which is to be tested for possible acceptance or rejection, although you should aim for a possible acceptance. The next is significance of study. It emphasizes on the significance and importance of the research work, that is, reason and aim of the selection of the topic of research. The next is statement of problem. The researcher has to clarify, identify the problem, issues, which is selected for the thesis or a dissertation. Last step of synopsis is research methodology, which means a plan of work describing the various aspects of the study in a logical sequence along with the methodologies to be employed. 
It helps to validate that the researcher has a fairly good idea about the nature of work likely to be involved. Methodology includes two things. The first one is empirical research, which means it is a way of gaining knowledge by means of direct and indirect observation or experience. The second is non-empirical research that is conducted without quantitative data. That means when you use non-numerical data such as observation and interviews. There are two sources of data. First is primary research, which involves gathering new data that has not been collected before. For example, with the help of surveys, using questionnaires or interviews with groups of people in a focus groups and observation. Secondary research involves gathering existing data that has already been produced. For example, researching the newspaper and company reports, case studies, diaries, critical incidents, portfolios, books, journals, periodicals, abstracts, index, directory, research report, conference papers, market report, annual report, internal record of organization, newspaper, magazine, CD-ROMs, online database, internet, video, and blog. At the end of the synopsis, you may write references and bibliography, which should be written in a standard pattern. And the standard pattern of bibliography I will explain in my next video. But it is not at all necessary to write bibliography in the synopsis, although it is essential to write in the dissertation as well in the thesis. Now, there is a very common question which is asked by the student that what should be the length of the synopsis? It is really difficult to define an overall length of the synopsis. However, it should be concise as far as possible and avoid repetition. It can be from 1500 to a few thousand words only. After writing synopsis and once your synopsis are approved, then you will start writing your dissertation. And before writing dissertation, it is again necessary to know the structure of the dissertation. The first step of structure of dissertation is introduction. It is similar as the introduction of the synopsis, although it will be more lengthier. The first chapter should include a background of the problem and a statement of the issue. There must be clarity of the purpose of the study, followed by the research question. Mind it, research, research question is very necessary because that is a base of your other chapters. Your whole research work and other chapters should be the answer of research question you raised. You should provide clear definition of the term related to the work. You will also expose your assumptions and expectation of the final result. Then the second step is literature review. Literature review, I have already described and mentioned how to write the literature review and what is the meaning of literature review. When I was telling you about the literature review, you have to write in the synopsis. The second is methodology. That means which type of research methodology you are using, whether you are using a primary data or secondary data or both. While you are collecting a data, the sample size should be normal. It should not be too small or too large. The technique of collecting data in the form of a questionnaire, interviews, or a direct observation. Once you collect the data, you have to analyze the data which should be analyzed according to the requirement of the topic. After collecting the data, it is to be tabulated and the total variables used are to be included in the study and then the relationship between the variable will be analyzed. After doing extensive research, you sum up with findings. This is very important point in the whole process of the research for the reason that it reflects your cerebral aptitude or intellectual ability. In findings, you retreat the research questions and discuss the outcomes. The last part of your dissertation is conclusion. You will summarize the study and briefly report the results and outcomes. Make an emphasis to explain that how your findings make a difference in the academic community and how they are implied in practice. The last is recommendation and suggestion. This part is the end chapter of your research where you propose future research 
that will clarify the issues further. Explain why you suggest this research and what form it should take. And at the end of the research, there is bibliography, which should be written in a proper format. And as I told you, the format of bibliography will be my new topic of the next video. This is all about the structure of synopsis and structure of dissertation. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned many things. But if you want any elaborative notes, you may visit to my website that is priyasepaha.com for all the elaborative notes which I mentioned in my website. Till then, goodbye.